Well, we first met when I went down with my brother Reynold. My parents were driving uh, him down to college and I tagged along as well to a university in Springfield, Missouri. And, uh, and so while we were down there dropping him off, and then I was, gonna, I was planning to go the following uh, semester, so I wasn't uh, about to start, but I thought I'd go for the ride, I'd check out the school and everything. And so we went down and it was on, on a Sunday, so we said, well, we'll go to a local church and we'll, we'll visit there. And that's when... Which happened to be my church. <laughs> and so my girlfriend Kim and I, I was 17 years old and we were sitting in church, uh, checking out the boys as you do <laughs> when you sit in church when you're 17 years old. And we saw a couple of good looking guys walk in the back and uh, Reynolds had a mustache and Ron didn't. And Kim leaned over to me and she said, wow, look at the one with the mustache. And I looked them both over and I said, he's okay but there's something about that other one that I really like. Little did I know that that was actually gonna be my husband eventually, but, but there was just something about him that, that I, I was attracted to. And so I got up my courage when, when church ended all by myself, because I was starting school too that fall. I thought, I'm just gonna go up and introduce myself to them. Hopefully they're starting at school and I'll see them. And so I introduced myself to them and, and Reynolds broke the news to me that just he was starting, Ron wasn't, and, um, but that Ron was coming in the January semester. So I thought, okay, I'll try, try to remember that, uh, look for this guy in January. And so that was when we first met. I remember every detail of when we first met. <laughs> now, she likes to say that she remembers every detail because she knows that he I don't remember, remember meeting anyone all. after church that day. <laughs> Because the thing was, I, my radar wasn't out because I wasn't going to start school yet. And uh, my brother and I were going down on football scholarships, but mm -hmm. he was starting first. I was starting later on. Yeah. And so, uh, so I just remember meeting, you know, some girls, some people at the okay. end of the program, he, I mean, at the end of the He service. remembers meeting some girl. That's the impression I made on him that day. Hey, she is some, some girl, isn't she? She's some girl. Good recovery, honey, good recovery. So then when I did start school, mm -hmm. uh, we ended up in the same psychology class. Yeah. And so uh, it was a large class, like maybe 90 students, and it was kind of semi-circular. And so I, I could yeah. sit in one area, and I noticed these beautiful eyes across the other side of the classroom. And I happened to notice him in my <laughs> class too, so I kind of angled my body so that between the heads, if I sat just right, I'm looking at the professor, <laughs> but I could look over and there he is. So I'm listening, of course, because you yeah. go to school to learn, people. So I was there to learn. Um, but I was making sure that I was angled just right so that I yeah. could see him if I looked over there. It was psychology class, so we we're kind of psychoanalyzing each other, perhaps. And we're still doing that, out. actually. <laughs> all these years later, but, we're still doing but it. But it was after one class, I had it all worked out in my mind how I was going to approach her and, and ask her out because there was this event that was going on in the gymnasium of the school where he, it, it said bring a blanket and a friend and it was going to be a movie night and you this just kind of sit on the, the floor. This is the days that when they showed movies with a projector <laughs> in the gym. Yeah. <laughs> and so I thought okay I know what I'm going to say. I said I noticed that there's an event going on at this school gymnasium. Mm -hmm. It says bring a blanket and a friend. Well I have a blanket but, but I, I don't, don't have, have a friend. friend. <laughs> <laughs> How's that for a lie? I know, it was pretty sappy, but you know what, it worked. So over the next couple of years while attending university, we dated and got to know each other and actually became best friends. Which is great groundwork for marriage and we're still best friends. And then it was between our third and fourth years of school that we got married. Well, our wedding day was very memorable but not in the way you might imagine. <laughs> yes, we had flowers and bridesmaids and dresses and candles and it was beautiful, but the memorable part of our wedding came because we actually lost two of our groomsmen. <laughs> now, it's not that we didn't know where they were. We knew exactly where they were. The whole congregation knew exactly where they were. They were on the platform, on the carpet, out cold. <laughs> two of our groomsmen fainted. Yeah during our wedding. Beautiful old church, but it yep. didn't have air conditioning. And so yep. couple that with a hot summer day and tuxedos. And kind of a long ceremony and the guys locking their knees or whatever it was. And so, pretty. so no. we, we look over and we see what's happening. Um, but we had kind of different reactions to it. Well, okay. <laughs> so after the first guy went down, 
I thought, okay, we can get through this. Everything's going to be fine. Doug is okay. When the second guy fainted, I'm starting to think, Lord, what is going on? As soon as, as Kelly fainted, I started crying. Looking at Kelly, Lord, is he going to be okay? <laughs> crying, thinking, no, don't let him stop the wedding. In the meantime, Mr. Spirituality next to me has his eyes closed, worshiping the Lord <laughs> in the worship ceremony. <laughs> and that's how different we are. Like I was in the moment and just so upset. And he was Mr. Yeah. Calm, Cool and Collected. Well, she wears her emotions on her sleeve, which, uh, you know, usually opposites attract. And I, I'm just kind of uh, you know, more reserved and just saying, everything will be okay. Hey, lay back, it's okay. <laughs> and that came out right during the wedding ceremony. Yes, it did. Well, two years after the wedding, we had our first baby. We had a little girl. And then three years later, we had a little boy. And then three years later, we had another little boy. So we were on the three year plan. Yes, right? we were. It worked for us. When they were little, of course, they had a lot of adjustments to make as far as television goes because their grandma and grandpa were on 100 Huntley Street, of course, David and Norma Jean Mains. And so we always had to, every Christmas. Get together at Christmas and yeah. do the, uh, the thing on set and sing Christmas carols and all that. So. Gather around the piano and, and sing the Christmas carols. And so they learned about television early on. It seems like once you have kids, the time just seems to fly by. <laughs> Never a dull moment for sure. And now we've been married 36 years and they're all adults and two are married with children of their own. Our daughter Andrea and her husband Jason live in Indiana and are the parents to Jadis and Declan and have a baby boy on the way. Adam works in television as a video editor and actually edits our Better Us program. Mm -hmm. And Eric and Kara are new parents to 10 month old baby Bradley. And we just love being Nana and Papa to these precious, fun, crazy kids. Actually, they come by it naturally. <laughs>season recently that we've gone through and, and really are still going through mm -hmm. that has been a challenge as we've walked through it as a couple and that had to do with Anne's health. Mm -hmm. So in June of 2019 I got a phone call from the doctor that nobody wants to get. Uh, a recent test result had come back to show that I had breast cancer. Now this was a total shock because there is no history of breast cancer in my family. Um, I didn't expect this. And so uh, when I got the phone call from the doctor, I was all alone in the house. Ron was at a, a golf tournament two mm -hmm. hours away, a uh, fundraising golf tournament. And I didn't know what to do, literally. I didn't know what to do. I started pacing through the house. I started crying out to God, literally crying out to God. God, what do I do? I don't know what to do. And as I'm crying and pacing and walking through the house, I wound up by the front door where there's a, a piece of artwork that has four words on it. The words are, be still and know. And I really felt that was God's Holy Spirit telling me to just calm down. There's nothing you need to do right now other than be still and know that I am God. I've got you. This hasn't taken me by surprise and I'll get you through this. So I called his cell phone, he answered, and I said to him, can you slip away somewhere where we can chat for a second? And so he did, and I, I told him um, about the doctor's phone call. And I knew right away, you know, she's home alone, a couple hours away. I knew I, I need to just get home to be with yeah. her right now. And so I grabbed my clubs out of the golf cart. I made an excuse to the guys there, and I said, I, I've just got to go and uh, got in the car, called her on the speaker phone, and we just were talking and talking uh, talking on the way Talking and crying back. and yeah. praying, and for about an hour of his drive home, that's what we did. We talked and cried and prayed. And, and finally I said to him, I said, honey, I just feel in my spirit that God wants me to journal my journey, mm -hmm. write down what I'm going through. I just felt that. And so he said, you know what? I'll be home in about 45 minutes, an hour, so why don't we hang up and you write your first journal entry? And I said, okay. And that's what we did. And that was the first journal entry of many, actually, yeah. that I wrote um, over the coming months. As um, a month later, I had my first surgery. Mm -hmm. And that surgery revealed that I would need chemotherapy, which was another blow. I didn't expect that. I was not wanting that at all. But in uh, September of 2019, 
I started chemo. Uh, and I had eight rounds of chemotherapy every two weeks. I had my last round of chemotherapy the week before Christmas. And um, as you can imagine, I had all of the side effects that come with it, extreme fatigue, extreme nausea, and I lost all of my hair. And um, I'm still, still getting used to my wig. And my hair is growing back slowly now. It was one of the hardest seasons I've ever been through. In those dark nights of the soul when I couldn't sleep, when I would get up in the middle of the night or early in the morning, I would wake up and, and leave the bedroom quietly and go out to the kitchen. God met me in those times. God was there for me. He was holding me. He was encouraging me, comforting me. The presence of God, I mean, God created us to need Him. And so, but it's not until we're in these really hard times that we realize how much we do need Him. So during those times, God was there for me, absolutely. But also, Ron was there in, in very tangible ways. I'll never forget, after my hair came out, actually, after my second chemo treatment, it started coming out in handfuls. As a woman, losing all your hair is, is like just adding insult to injury. It's just so hard. But during that time, many times, my bald head, this guy here, would take lotion and say, honey, come sit down. And he would take lotion and he would massage the shiny skin of my bald head and he would end every single time by kissing my head and saying, I love this beautiful head. And that was exactly what I needed. That was exactly what I needed to hear. So, so many times, Ron was with me through every chemo session. He was encouraging me. He, he was up in the night with me. He was taking care of me getting me my medication, which was very strict and very regimented. I had to take, he was there for me. We'd never been down this road before. I didn't know really how to navigate it, um, but I just knew I needed to be there for her and I needed to do whatever I could to encourage her. And um, so I, I like to say I was kind of the, the small R rock, while God for her was the, the big R rock. He was, God was the one that she was really leaning on and he's the one that gives true security mm -hmm. in our life and right. so uh, but if i could do my small r rock you know job i would do whatever i could uh, to help her through this and and but i was so glad that she did have that that strength that mm -hmm. she had those morning times with god uh, with, she'd get a coffee, she'd get up early and she'd spend time with, with him and she would, you know, even journal, keep journaling every once in a while, journaling yeah, other the, wonderful Yeah, that first thoughts. journal entry yeah. that I wrote on the very first day, I ended up writing many, many more. And and in the fall when I was going through chemo, I, I thought, well, maybe these could bless somebody else. So I started sharing them on, on Facebook, social media, just, you know, one or two here and there, just hoping I could, I could be a blessing to somebody and people started tracking with me by the thousands and encouraging me to put them into a book and so um, eventually that's what we did sometimes the path is difficult it's really hard but that doesn't mean that you're left alone it doesn't mean that God's not with you it just means that you didn't see it coming but God did and as we continue to trust him you know the the ground around us could be shaking Everything around us could be falling apart. As long as the ground beneath our feet is solid, that's what matters. And that can only happen as we put our trust in God, as we turn to Him and say, Jesus, I need you. I give you my life. I surrender to you. Help me get through this. He says to you, I am with you and I will give you everything you need to get through that. And as a couple, you know, we each have to have solid ground beneath our feet. And then, as we are, are trusting in God individually, He draws us closer together as a couple. And then we walk forward as a couple, trusting Him. And you, it, it brings you closer together. It doesn't push you apart. Because I'm sure some days that when you were taking care of me, it wasn't easy. And you were tired and you'd had enough, but, but you were still trusting God and you were leaning into Him as well. Absolutely. And 
we would have our individual you know times with God of prayer but then we'd come together and there's something special about praying together yes as a couple oh, absolutely. and just bringing your Makes your needs your concerns your your worries to God together under his authority and then it, it just helps every other area of your life of your marriage mm -hmm. to go a lot smoother when you have when you know he's the one he's the top priority absolutely and uh, we certainly encourage that for every married couple no matter what you're going through mm -hmm. now the good news is yes. that recently you got a report I've, I've had two doctors have told me i am cancer free mm -hmm. so i am thrilled about that i'm so yeah. excited for what god has next you know what god is faithful and god is good and as fear tries to do its best work, um, I just trust that God is holding up his hand and saying, no, you can't touch my child. No, I've got her. We're walking this, this road together. And um, that's really what you have to do when you go through hard times. Just trust God, lean into him, lean into each other, and, and trust that he's gonna get you through it.